And first, just a brief introduction, although you have just heard about uh, my background. Uh, I have had for 30 years of experience on Wall Street. I have seen the ups and downs in the market. I started at Morgan Stanley actually in 1986, uh, and I have been a private equity manager, hedge fund manager, investment newsletter, uh, in which I have both options letters and long-term investment. Um, my major message today, of course, there's opportunity to make money by short-term trading, but the big opportunity that I see, in addition to doing options to supplement your portfolio, are actually investing in stocks. This is a great time to build a portfolio. Even though everyone will tell you you can't time the market, I, Hillary Kramer, am proof that you can time the market and it matters when you do go in. Yes, it is a matter of decades that you want to be in the market and over the long, long term, it will tend to start to even itself out. But going in now or going in as we go down another 5 to 10 percent, because we're going to bounce back soon, Already, even today, I'm seeing a little more stability in the market, even though we saw last Monday, Tuesday, an incredible bounce back as we came to the beginning of the year. Um, let me first just explain one thing, which is that even our safe havens are gone. What I am showing you right here is that this is, well, wait, actually, let me just go back for a minute. What I'm showing you right here is that 80% of all stocks are down year to date, 80%, 25% are down, 50% or more, and even these bright spots, and yes, Exxon and Chevron up, you know, incredible double digits, people waited for years for that, but when you see this kind of downward action, Microsoft, Apple, look at how small Meta has gotten. Meta is, uh, you know, has shrunk to just a small pittance of itself, down more than 60%, um, and then what I'm showing you here, in one month, Microsoft, Apple, this was as of yesterday, these are all down 10% in a month. So even if you entered the market a month ago, you're down 10%, which means you have 20% upwards to just break even. Um, again, I wanna get to those stocks really quickly. So let me just make a very important point here. I'm showing you VIX volatility. Some of you may believe in volatility, some may not follow it at all, but volatility is something that is important in the market and to determine how much stability and lack of stability we have. And in 31 months, we have been on the roller coaster. Normal territory is 10 to 15. Look at how the volatility index has, or vol this is vol cash volatility has gone up and down. Okay, big is not beautiful. When you look at this presentation here, what you see is that the big players have not done well big players have actually done quite poorly. What my message to you is today is that yes, there's opportunity in the big guys. I especially love Goldman Sachs, for example, but uh, you can see how, uh, right, dogs of the Dow, it doesn't hold true here. This particular chart that I'm showing you, I start with the, the biggest companies to the smallest, and you see how much they are off their 52 week high. What you want to do and what I have focused on today is thinking small cap. Now, small cap isn't, let's say, in the 1990s, we know small cap was a $20, $50 million company. Now, a small cap could be a $5 billion market cap. So there's a lot more stability in buying a small cap. The Russell, the Russell usually is at a premium to, uh, to the big cap stocks. Now, it is trading actually at, um, at a premium, but it's a discount, a discount of almost 10% off of uh, the big cap stocks. Uh, this chart, again, just briefly, I think there's really only one thing for me to really point out here. And what you can see is the differential between, for example, like information technology, um, and you see the, the growth, it's all in the small caps, not in the large caps. So even in the areas that have been traditionally doing well, it's the small caps that where you make your money. Small is outperforming. When I show you three different periods of time here, I roll 10 years all the way down to three. Okay, 
let's talk about the stocks and the stocks that I love. Omega, Omega, O-H-I, healthcare. That is one to put in your portfolio for the long term. Omega has a 9.2% dividend yield. Part of the reason it's 9.2% is a real estate investment trust. It is one of my absolute favorite REITs. It is um, long-term care, assisted living, nursing homes, rehab, medical offices, um, surgery care centers, OHI. Take a look. Earnings have been up 132% in um, going through the time period of COVID. Um, revenue up 11, revenue up 11%. percent I mean, to think that earnings are up 132%. And we've had that dividend has been around. Don't think that dividend's going to be canceled. It's been around. Uh, last time that was ever cut was in 2000. Um, Old Republic, so OHI, one to buy. Old Republic, ORI. If you are looking again to build a portfolio for the long term, this 4.1% dividend yielding title insurance company is the way to go. Revenue is up 32% since March 2, 2020. Operating earnings, 54%. Everyone thinks that title insurance, the reason the stock is down uh, 19% the past 52 weeks, title insurance doesn't go away. That's because uh, the, the, the real estate market looks like it's falling and that no one's ever going to buy real estate again. All that's happened is we've gone from it being a seller's market to a buyer's market. And title insurance is all the more important when you get into a time period where there are short sales, where there are quick sales, where there are um, where there are like hairy deals that have taken place quickly when it was a, uh, you know, a cowboy's great Western market, which is what we had. I can actually give you an example. I peeled off a lot of real estate uh, in the past 12 months. Uh, there was one home that I went, a two family home, I went to put on the market at $500,000. A week later, I put it on the market at $750,000. That's how crazy the market was. So you can imagine how quick deals went through and that therefore title insurance, which has to clear all of the issues around uh, a real estate transaction is all the more important. We are gonna see Old Republic making that much more money going forward. Here is Fulton Financial, a 3.6% dividend yield. I call this the tiny Goldman Sachs. I love Fulton Financial, F-U-L-T, Mid-Atlantic Regional Bank. Stock's down 14% in the last 52 weeks, in the last year. Revenue's up 9%. Operating earnings are up. One of the best managed banks um, on both the commercial side, on both personal banking, lending. They have a stellar balance sheet. They keep a lot of the um, a lot of the debt to themselves because they know that they're giving. They don't have to sell it off because they know that the, the debt is very uh, credit worthy. Here is Trade Desk, TTD. Many of you heard about Trade Desk because this is a true fallen angel because it was a big high flyer. Trade desk, there is, there is no dividend here. It is down 52% in the last 52 weeks, but revenue up 35%. You hear about trade desk TTD, you think that maybe it's something in the finance area, but actually trade desk is the hub where the advertising is sold, where all the advertising takes place between the social media companies, online companies, and traditional companies, uh, or any kind of company looking to add to, to, to present and to do advertising. Right, Hillary, we've got a question for yes. you. Yes. Do, you. do you trade the VXX? Do I trade the VIX? Okay, excellent question. I do not trade the VIX. Sometimes we will do I will do the, I will, yes, I will do the cash VIX, but I'm very careful about the VXX because very often it can be tricky because you're buying, depending on what ETF in the VIX that you're buying, you can end up buying futures on the VXX. So even if you pick the right direction of the VXX, um, it's almost like buying options 
on options, but I would watch it very, very carefully. But I warn anybody to be very, very, not just anybody, everyone to be careful about it. Use it as a gauge, not as a trading tool. Okay, Zebra, Z-B-R-A. Uh, Zebra is again, another one of these high flyers like Trade Desk, uh, which like Trade Desk baby thrown out with the bathwater, certainly um, Zebra is not just best of breed, it's only in the breed. Uh, this originally, originally started with uh, barcodes in 1969, but has grown into not just RFID, RFID, uh, um, that's the ability, for example, to know when you eat a steak where that cow was originally, calf was originally born, who the parents were, how it traveled and where it got to that restaurant and how it ended up on your plate. Um, that's a pretty morbid example, but it is really an important one because we have to be able to know and track everything. What do you think FinTech is all about today? Um, it's all about being able to understand where things came from and to follow them. Now, what is important about Zebra, which by the way is down 58%, um, down even more because at the end of the day, I was watching it down another $14 yesterday. Revenue up 7%. When you go to um, any kind of online operation, any kind of factory, any manufacturing, any inventory, any warehouse central system, you look at Amazon, even if you walk into Home Depot, let's say, and you ask about an item, if you notice today, it's like it's just like a gun that's used and it just immediately can trace and tell whoever's using it exactly where a product is located, where it is, um, where an inventory, how long it'll take to get. And that's all about taking um, barcodes and inventory and putting it into the cloud and integrating it within an organization. So if it needs, if reordering has to be done, restocking, um, or, or if there's any kind of holdup, it's all can be identified with one quick um, action of that barcode gun. And um, the growth is just going to continue as, um, as we realize so many of the issues out there today, so many of the problems with earnings have to do with, um, it's, not the, it's not the revenue top line, it's that whole process as we know of the delivery and the system. And so therefore Zebra is more important than ever, yet it's not really understood. I just wanna briefly quickly say, because again, I don't wanna run out of time, but what makes a company like Zebra so important and why it drops so much is that over the past 20 years, since the 2000, not 2008, 2000, um, since we saw the market crash of 2000, we have lost actual true analysts that can look at the market and tell you what is, what is the true fundamentals and the macro outlook of any kind of company. Um, you know, the analysts, the, 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 the analysts on the investment banks, the research, the sell side, it's just been decimated. So everything in the automation process has become, um, even many of the, it's just scanning and deciding, you know, what companies to buy and sell based on momentum and not on looking at the, both the macro picture as well as the micro fundamental picture of a company. And Zebra gets an A plus on both. Here we go, five below. You all know five below, F-I-V-E. Uh, the stock is down 37%, which is actually very surprising because it is considered, uh, you know, probably truly uh, stock for a recessionary environment, which is clearly what we're going into is this recessionary environment. But I do have some good news in there, but I'll go back to that in a minute. Um, five Below has replaced Staples with school supplies, for example. Five Below has replaced traditional stores, supermarkets for children's needs, whether it be for birthday parties or candy, or it has replaced just about everything because Five Below has an incredible 
Well, they probably use Zebra and use it well to make sure that their inventory control is um, certainly robust and that they, and they do great merchandising. And uh, it's just an incredible defensive stock and will only go up from here, especially when revenue has been rising at the same time as the stock has been dropping. Here's one that will surprise you. Crocs, C-R-O-X. Yes, Crocs. I'm talking about the Crocs shoes that seem to have been, you know, a fad and around for, you know, many years and have come in and out. Revenue on Crocs is up 50% since March 2020. Yep, 50% and the stock is down 60%. Crocs, I would say, I use the word in this presentation, it's obscenely cheap obscenely and trading at 10 times earnings. Uh, the operating earnings are up 45%. The key with Crocs is that their actual product, which used to be kind of the replacement for slippers and flip-flops have become a standard in, in the medical field. Um, with those that are in the medical field, it's also become a standard and they have uh, perfected a lot of their technology and there are many people that will walk around in Crocs all day long and find them just as comfortable as sneakers. So they've become a replacement in many ways um, to traditional footwear. Uh, but to think that the stock is down 60%, what will happen? This is the right time for me to go. And I said, we have some good news. We're all being set up here. And this is probably the most important message I can possibly give. And again, I'm talking fast because I only have the 30 minutes and I apologize for that because I could talk for two hours straight. The market is going to come back and it will come back strong. What the Fed is doing is a head fake. Okay, they are raising rates, raising rates, raising rates. They give themselves bullets in the gun. When it gets bad enough, you are going to see Chairman Powell go in there and he's going to slash rates and we are going to see a 1,000 point plus day on the Dow. We are going to see the NASDAQ take off. And that day that it happens is the day after we have capitulation. It's the day after small investors, individual investors, even some of the traditional like institutional investors that aren't the fast, smart money in the know, they're gonna get caught also, but their pants down having liquidated because many of their individual investors in those ETFs, in those funds will have sold. What will happen is when those, when, when Fed Chairman Powell announces it's so bad, we have to, we have to slash rates and we're gonna cut rates. It is going to be a free for all for everyone especially those out there who have options, but I'm not saying that options are what you wanna be buying. What I'm saying is buy now, buy as the market continues to fall right now. Even on the S&P, what you wanna do is get yourself positioned and be in those companies that are gonna take, that will take off the companies that, that are the zebras, the Omega Healthcare, the companies like Crocs that are gonna get bought up. Now, companies like Crocs, what will happen there is, as suddenly money is cheap again, some of the big private equity funds, they're gonna be ready to pounce and jump in and buy some of the companies that have small enough market caps that it's easy for them and there aren't any big risks and they can go in quickly, use their, um, use the ability to borrow cheap or use stock of other companies that they have that, are, that have come back. And there's gonna be a lot of acquisitions. Right now, investment banking is, is getting, I'd say, yeah, I used the word decimated before. It is a bloodbath out there. You know, Some of these investment banks are just shooting the bankers, getting rid of them. And we're gonna see very quickly how they're gonna start um, hiring and the deal flow is gonna be unbelievable. I am gonna tell you now about one of my absolute favorite stocks. Of all the companies today that I'm presenting to you, some of them are absolute must buys. Again, Omega Health, a 9% dividend yield, down when it should be up, when revenue continues to increase, the bottom line increasing. But Omnicell, OMCL, this is one of those stocks that's like an NVIDIA, which you know NVIDIA has been cut down almost 70%. Um, and was a hot stock, you know, the chips, the chips have hit, have hit an all time bottom, as we know, 
Um, but a company like Omnicell, which is far, it's a pharmacy without people, okay? It's automated pharmacies for the hospitals. So it's taking the pharmacist out of the picture. Now, Omnicell will claim, OMCL, that it creates, um, you know, better quality, um, you know, better quality, uh, less, less error, less error, human error. Now, I'm not going to say that that's always the case, right? Because garbage in, garbage out, you know, someone still has to write a prescription and decide what medication someone will receive. Uh, so it doesn't mean that Omnicell is perfect, but I will say it's a lot closer to perfect than the way the system has been traditionally, especially in the hospitals, um, with the pharmaceuticals, with the medications, with the medication delivery. Omnicell is down 58% okay, in the last 52 weeks, but the revenue is up 22%. This is a company that's cheap at nine times earnings. Omnicell, OMCL is one of these companies where you're going to turn around and say, how is this a $900 company? You have here a five bagger, a seven bagger. There will be that kind of return on Omnicell. So if you're looking for tomorrow's Tesla by OMCL, it's not going to be in electric cars. It's going to be in automated smart pharmacies. Okay, Ring Central. <laughs> that was my being cute. Can you hear me now? Ring, it's the do it yourself system, which has continued to improve in its technology. Um, there is obviously it's called Ring Central because one can automate and go right into a centralized service that notifies the police when there is any kind of infringement on your property. Um, the video technology and capability continues to improve. Ring gets easier and easier to use. Ring with solar systems get cheap, gets cheaper to use. And the stock is down. Are you ready? Almost 90% in the last 52 weeks. 90%. Now I'm going to be interrupted in a minute. So let me get to Ingredion here. Ingredion, this is one of my great stable companies, a three and a half percent dividend yield. Buy Ingredion for that long term buy and hold. Yeah, yes, Omnicell is going to be your 500% winner. Your trade desk is going to be a double. Fulton Financial is going to be a winner over the next five years, a double. But Ingredion, it's, it's your sure-fire, it's your 3M kind of company. So you get your 3.5% dividend yield. It is your starches. It is your sugars. It's in everything from your ice cream to your Chips Ahoy cookies to your everything. All is right, it, Hillary, oh, we are over time. Thank oh, no. Oh my goodness, hold on here. I just want to mention Dexcom. Please let me just say DXCM down 39%. That's another that's positioned to double for diabetes care. And we've done a lot of work out in the field on Dexcom, DXCM. I am so sorry that I did not get through everything, but it's all about opportunity stocks. It is not just an ETF market. This is a pickers market got to pick the right stocks and you're going to be positioned in a year from now with a hundred percent return in your portfolio. So I thank you so much. Thank you for the time. And I really appreciate the money show for including me, for inviting me today, for having me here. It is really an honor because I love the money show. That's been part of my life. And the money show is, is family to me. So I hope everyone has a wonderful money show and uh, success and, um, and good luck with your investing. You won't need it if you're careful and you pick your spots. All right. Thanks so much, Hillary <laughs> Kramer of Game Changers. We will see you on the next one. <laughs>